One of the world's oldest occupations, that of the grave digger. It's a profession that's guaranteed of future customers. And one that has been spotlighted in the works of Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, and even Stephen King. And while reverence for the dead is an essential part of the work, our next story deals with a man who has none at all. Pete Ringwald is a bitter, nasty hull of a man. In fact, the dead are probably the only people he hasn't offended. But all that may be about to change. Now prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so, Gabriel Pine, me and my buddy Bo rest got a job digging graves at the local cemetery in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Right away, we didn't like it much. The thing that bugged us the most, our boss, Pete Ringwald, was the meanest man I ever knew. We hated working for him, but we needed the money. Pete had been the groundskeeper here for the past 20 years. He never really cared about nothing or nobody. Especially the dead. Okay, preacher, it's time to wrap this medicine show up. <laughs> Excuse me? I said wrap it up, put a lid on it. You're cutting into my lunch hour. <laughs> Let us all join in a final amen. For it's time to leave these green pastures and return to our homes. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Speed it up. I'm getting hungry. We're almost there, boss. Almost don't cut it, moron. There. Rest in peace. <laughs> well, that ain't right, Tim. You shut your mouth. Don't you say what's right in my cemetery. Even a damn dog could do your job. Now, fill in that hole. Everything seemed to boil up Pete's blood. People said he was born in a foul mood. And then he just got meaner. An awful, awful man. Not well. You hear that, boss? Red. No respect for anyone. Not even the dead. Somebody's singing somewhere. Shut your mouth, dummy. I never call no break. The hell are you? I'm just an old woman. Do you like my song? <laughs> it's all about you. Get out of my cemetery, you shriveled up old bat. You be warned, grave digger. Be warned about what? An awful, awful man. Not well bred. No respect for anyone, not even the dead. He's the old broad. You two idiots get back to work or I'll fire the both of you. My business. Smart asses think they know everything. I gotta fire them two boys. And
next morning, we had another bite of the berry, and Pete was ornerier than ever. Bo and me took it, but we knew somebody would have to pay him back someday. You got it, Bo? Almost. Oh. Oh. Hey, the hell did you do that for? You're useless. You know that? Just useless. And all the love man, not What? The dead. Nothing. Go on and bury this thing. Bury it deep. Put rocks on top of it. Crush it. Crush it? That ain't right. I said crush it. You ain't gonna do that. Be unholy. Get the hell out of here. I never want to see the two of you again. I knew it myself. And all of the land is not well raised. Jano, you're dead. You hear me? You're dead. You hear me? You hear me? that day. The doctor said it looked like something scared him to death. What's the explanation? Was this an elaborate plan of revenge engineered by the two disgruntled employees? If so, was the old woman in on it too? Or was her spirit just making sure that her body received a proper burial? Is this story of the wicked cemetery boss based on an actual event? Or are we burying the truth? the mouth of life.